Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're making the most basic Japanese miso soup. The recipe might be simple, but the flavor is definitely authentic. Check it out. Hi, new friend, it's Erica right here. I'm a Taiwanese citizen currently living in America. Cooking and traveling is my passion, so I'm here to share with you my favorite Asian recipes. On top of that, I also make video talking about food knowledge, so if that interests you, please subscribe and keep watching. Last week, we made a video talking all about miso, and I also teach you how to pick your own signature miso in the supermarket for your miso soup. So to continue the theme of last week, today we're making the authentic Japanese miso soup. The basic version. Miso soup are not only packed with nutrition such as vitamin B1, 2, 6, and 12, folic acid, potassium, magnesium, calcium, zinc, iron, and dietary fiber, but also have the effect of suppressing the increase of blood pressure, preventing stroke and gastric cancer. There's literally a saying in Japan that you don't need a doctor as long as you have miso. So now I'm gonna teach you how to make this authentic Japanese miso soup that you'll see in Japan restaurant. Here we go. Here are the ingredients that we'll need for today's miso soup recipe. We need some dry kelp for the broth, also some dry seaweed for the soup, some tofu, scallion, and miso paste right here, as well as the bonito flakes for the broth, and some water. To make the miso soup, we need the Japanese traditional dashi broth. And to make the dashi broth, you can either use a pre-made um, dashi powder, or you can make it from scratch, and which is where we're doing today. To make the Japanese dashi at home is very simple. We only need three ingredients, which is water, konbu, which is the sea kelp, as well as the bonito flakes. Even though the ingredient is very simple, but the ratio is very important. If we're making one liter of dashi broth, we need one liter of water, also 10 grams of kombu, and 20 grams of bonito flakes. So the ratio for water, kombu, and bonito flakes is 100 to 1 to 2. First thing we need to do is soak the kombu in the one liter water that we prepare in the pot for 30 minutes until it's totally softened. This soaking process not only gonna soften the kombu, but also gonna melt all the great flavor from the kombu into our water. And while we're waiting for the kombu to be soaked for 30 minutes, we'll also soak our seaweed for later miso soup ingredients. In the future, we'll make a video talking about what's the difference between seaweed and kelp, but all you need to know right now is that seaweed range dramatically in size, which kombu are normally very thick and large. When the time is up, transfer your pot onto the stove and turn the heat to medium low, and here's the key. Right before the water starts boiling, you have to turn the heat to low. To make dashi, we never want the water to be boiling while the kelp is still in the broth. Because the boiling water will cook out the impurity of kombu and make the broth cloudy. We don't want that. For around 10 minutes of heating process, all the kombu flavor are now in the broth. We can just take out the kombu. I normally just eat the kombu right away when I take it out. Nutritionally, kombu contains iodine, which is important for thyroid functions. It also has iron, calcium, along with the trace minerals. Also, vitamin A and C as well. So there's no really point of throwing this nutrition-packed kwanbu away. Oops, I guess I forgot to turn on the mic right here, but what I'm trying to say is that if you don't like to eat the kwanbu by itself, the next week video, I'll be teaching you how to make the kwanbu appetizer with the extra kwanbu that you use in your miso soup, so stay tuned. Now it's time to add in your bonito flakes for the dashi signature umami flavor. Turn the heat to medium and let it boil for around 2 minutes. Scoop out the scum whenever you see some. It depends on your bonito flakes purity. If you didn't see any scum on top of your broth, you don't need to scoop it out. I didn't see anything today, so I'll just skip that part. When the time is off, turn off the heat and we'll have to filter out the bonito flakes. I normally use a filter and put a paper towel on top of it so I can filter out all the tiny bit of bonito flakes. But if you don't have one, it's fine. You can just scoop out the bonito flakes. And here is a miso base, Japanese dashi. I like to have a little small bowl of miso soup whenever it feels like it. So I like to keep my dashi as an ice cube form in the freezer. So whenever I want some miso soup, I can have it right away. 
Here I got some silicone mini ice cube maker and I'll save the same portion amount of ingredients for the future miso soup making. Of course you can cook all of them all together right now, but I just really want to show you something real cool later. I'll just put them in the freezer until it turns into ice cube shape and then I'll transfer them into the reusable zipper bag and whenever it feels like a bowl of miso soup, I can just use the pre-made dashi. You can keep your dashi ice cube in the freezer for up to one month. Now we got our dashi, let's make our miso soup. Heat up the dashi until it's almost boiling and then turn off the heat. Use a filter if you have one to melt the miso paste of your choice into the broth. If you still don't know how to pick miso, I'll leave a link up here. You can check out our last week's video. Without the filter, it might be a little hard to melt the miso, but it's still doable. Just make sure all the miso are melted before you turn on the heat again. We used the kelp earlier to make the dashi, and now we're adding the thin seaweed and tofu into the miso soup, and we'll heat it up for around a minute or two. We don't want to cook the tofu and seaweed for too long because it's going to change its texture and flavor. So as soon as you see the side of the pot start boiling, it's done. I like to add some scallion on top and here you go! The authentic Japanese miso shiru is ready! Having a bowl of miso soup for breakfast in the winter is the best thing ever. It will warm you up instantly and give you a great start of the day. In Japanese family, there's many different miso recipes they cook daily. There's no specific rule of what you can or cannot put into a miso soup. So you can add in any veggie, mushroom, or roots that you like into your soup. Just make sure to add the roots or anything that needs to be cooked through before you add in the miso paste. Because constantly boiling miso will change its flavor a bit sometime. Remember the dashi ice cube earlier? Let me show you how I prepared an instant miso soup with it. I love this little baby food jar that is literally perfect for my soup. I'll just drop three ice cubes into the jar and put it into the microwave for around a minute and a half. And then I'll add in my miso and whisk it real quick to make sure all the miso is melted in my soup. And then I'll just add in my tofu, seaweed, and scallion on top. And then voila! The instant healthy to-go miso soup is ready. I love to pack this for lunch for me and my husband for work. All you need to do is just microwave the jar whenever you want to drink them. It's an awesome meal prep technique right here. Cheers! The word of the day today is wei cheng tang, miso soup. We learned wei cheng last week, which is miso in Chinese, and the last character today is tang, which means soup. So in Chinese, miso soup is wei cheng tang. And here's a little bonus for you. The Japanese miso soup is miso shilu. Miso shilu. Thank you for cooking with me to the end today. Let me know if you like the recipe by giving this video a thumbs up. It's only gonna take you a second, but it means a lot to me. I make a video on YouTube every Thursday, so remember to hit that bell and you'll never miss out. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye!